In this video, we'll talk about glioblastoma and its subtypes. Glioblastoma is an aggressive brain tumor. So glioblastoma arises due to uncontrolled proliferation of the glial cells in the central nervous system. So the key cell which is GFAB positive is the astrocytes. So glioblastoma is actually one type of astrocytoma where the astrocytes proliferate in an uncontrolled manner. Glial cells generally regulate proper brain function and maintain homeostasis. At any point of time, if you need more information about glial cells, click on the video in the i button. Now glioblastoma can be anywhere throughout the CNS, could be in the spinal cord or even in the brain. But glioblastoma is more commonly found in the cerebral hemispheres. So here are quick overview about glioblastoma. So it's most common and aggressive primary CNS tumors in the adult. Typically, it affects the cerebral hemispheres and can cross the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is the uh, white matter connection between the two hemispheres. So that is why this is also termed as butterfly glioma. When it comes to histology, it is pseudopalisading necrosis, necrosis which is pretty obvious in this particular uh, uh, tumor. Then hypercellular areas with pleomorphic astrocyte is one of the common feature. So obviously there is a garland like arrangement seen in this kind of tumor. It's always GFAP po positive. That means it has a glial origin. Remember that GFAP marks the intermediate filament of the astrocytes. So that is why it, this particular tumor is of astrocytic origin. Prognosis remains very poor. Median survival rate is less than uh, one year despite of the treatments. So then we talk about adult brain tumors and its classification. So if you quickly look at the classification, these tumors are primary and basically they originate into the CNS. So there are gliomas, there are meningiomas, there are pituitary adenomas, schwannomas and of also medulloblastomas. Among them, gliomas could be uh, uh, subdivided into astrocytomas. Among that, the glioblastoma is most aggressive type. There is oligodendromas, there is also ependidymomas also. So now let's talk about the common sim symptoms of glioblastoma. There could be headache, nausea, vomiting, and seizures. And all these kind of phenotypes that is observed in glioblastoma patients are due to a compression of the nearby tissue as a result of this expanding tumor in the brain. Now this tumor or the glioblastoma can be situated in any brain location. For example, if it is situated in the motor cortex, then motor activities are compromised. There could be muscle weakness. Now imagine this is present in the sensory cortex, so it would lead to numbness. If it is present in the visual cortex, there could be vision related impairments. If it is present in the frontal lobe, it can even lead to a change in the personality. So depending upon the location of the glioblastoma, different brain activities or different brain functionalities could be compromised. When it comes to diagnosis, it can be diagnosed best using the MRI. So ring enhancing lesion with central necrosis is a key and prominent feature of glioblastoma in the MRI images. So here is an MRI image where you can see the um, ring enhancing uh, lesion and you can see the central part which is basically a necrotic core. Other than that, brain biopsy followed by immunohistochemistry for GFAP is another way of testing for glioblastoma. Now glioblastoma has uh, heterogeneous cell types in that tumor. So if you look at the tumor in details, there could be tumor cells, T cells, macrophages, microglia, fibroblast, myeloid derived suppressor cells, uh, and most importantly, glioma stem cells. These glioma stem cells are the cells that makes these tumors so aggressive because even if radiation and chemotherapy can reduce the tumor size, this, glioblast uh, this glioma stem cells would make sure they can make more tumor cells and can regrow the tumor. Anyway, this caused the resistance to the therapies. Now, this glioblastoma is basically very different in patient to patients and the cellular composition of the tumor also is heterogeneous between patient cohorts. Why it is that? Because 
there are molecular subtypes and all these kind of differences are nowadays apparent due to the uh, more stringent way of analysis. Single cell RNA sequencing is a process by which cellular heterogeneity can be depicted in these tumors. And based on the RNA sequencing data, there are different types of tumors. But before that, let me quickly over, give an overview that whether there are genetic causes of GBM or not. Yes, there are several genes which are mutated, but still now there is no driver oncogene reported for GBM. So the genes which are commonly mutated include TP53, EGFR, PDGFR, NF1, IDH1, P10, MDM2, etc. Now, the single cell RNA sequencing has uh, revealed the glioma molecular subtypes. So there are classical, mesenchymal, neural and proneural subtypes. In classical, the EGFR receptor level is high. In this case, no TP53 mutation is found. CDK2, CDKN2A deletion is prominent and high notch and sonic hedgehog is a marker for classical uh, glioblastoma. Then there is proneural where uh, altered PDGFRA is found. Also point mutation in IDH1 is pretty common. Focal amplification of the chromosomal region 4Q12 is pretty apparent in proneural, uh, proneural glioblastoma. So it's not only GFAP but also expression of astrocyte, astro uh, oligodendrocyte genes are pretty much common. Then mesenchymal origin uh, glioblastoma has focal deletions in chromosome number 17Q11.2. There is mutation in NF1, TP53 and P10. Now note that these kind of specific molecular signatures differentiate them from each other. Expression of CH13L1 and increased NF kappa beta signaling output is pretty common feature of the mesenchymal origin uh, glioblastoma. In case of neural subtype, there are neuronal markers which are expressed in the tissue like syn synactotagmin and SLC12A5 etc. So all of these tumors are basically glioblastoma but with certain differences and knowing these differences is really important because once these dif differences are clear and the molecular mechanism is clear the targeted therapy can be achieved otherwise similar kind of therapy can only ascertain some sort of like benefit to the patient not entirely. So let's talk about the treatment. So treatment involves surgical removal, radiotherapy, chemotherapy with uh, uh, timozolimide and basically glucocorticoids and anti-epileptic medication can help to ma manage the symptoms. But since it has a very poor prognosis, most of the patient die within one year. Still, there is no complete cure or treatment for glioblastoma. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.